Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Apple's Root Podcast number 11. The best, the greatest, the only podcast that talks about Apple rumors, at least on a weekly basis. Now, if you guys know any podcasts that do what I do, let me know, because then I can probably say I'm not the greatest and I'm not the best anymore. I might be the second greatest and the second best. (laughs) Before I start with the news... I need to talk about show notes, and I have uh, improved the show notes by a factor of three and a half, and that that's quite a lot, actually. And if you guys go to applebrew.com, if there's anything from the stories right now that you're kind of like, hey, I kind of want to check out this, this news article, I want to check out what this guy is saying, um, go to the show notes located in applebrew.com and just click the link for that article. Very easy, very simple, and actually, if you have an iPhone and you're using Instacast or Downcast, it should work there too, as in you should be able to just click on on the links in the show notes and that should push you on to the related articles. With all that said, let's get started with the first news. iMore says that the iPhone 5, iPad mini, iPod nano are all going to be announced in September 12th. And at least the iPhone 5 will release on September 21st. Now, they weren't sure if the iPad mini and the iPad nano are going to release on September 21st, but uh, they say that at least the iPhone 5 is going to release then. And one thing to keep in mind is these, um, <laughs> these dates are repeated pretty much all throughout the week. I mean, everybody picked them up, not just iMore. I mean, uh, the Wall Street Journal, I don't know if the Wall Street Journal did it, but uh, Bloomberg and actually, you know, the big hitters out there pretty much picked it up and they said, yep, this is going to happen. And it seems to me like the Apple PR people were just like, hey, let's let people know about this right now. So let's leak our own, uh, our own, our own rumors, our own news, our own event schedule. Next, the Reuters says that the iPhone 5 event will be on September 12th. This is what I'm talking about earlier. But they didn't mention anything about the iPad mini. So, I don't know. Maybe maybe the PR people from Apple were just like, ah, we don't really like Reuters that much. Let's not give them uh, uh, any news about the, iP- uh, about the iPad mini. And speaking of the iPhone 5, Apple Insider says that the in-cell screen shortage from the iPhone 5, because there is this new in-cell technology, there will be such a shortage of iPhone 5s that only 4 to 5 million iPhones will be shipped, I don't know, like the first two weeks, or, you know, just just the initial shipment will be 4 to 5 million units, and they they were expecting 20 to 25, as in 20 to 25 million people are expecting to buy these iPhones, but there's only going to be 4 to 5 million available. And... This means that these iPhones will be rare. So I suggest you either line up early or you go right in front of the, the Apple.com, right on the announcement date, and just keep hitting F5, F5, and just refresh. Just keep refreshing it until you get your iPhone. And and yeah, I would suggest that because if this was the case, these iPhones will be pretty rare. Sticking to the iPhone 5 news, the iPhone 5 front panel was... Um, I guess tested out. I don't know. I don't know if tested out is the right word, but there's somebody on YouTube that got a hold of this front panel and this person did uh, did a seven minute video, pretty much seven minute video, six minutes, 53 seconds, a seven minute video comparing the iPhone 5's front panel to the iPhone 4's front panel. Now, this isn't... Um, I, I have to add this. Uh, this guy, this wasn't the like official guy that says, yep, this is the iPhone 5. It's the rumored iPhone 5 panel. And this is what this person found. He, he found that it was 0.1 millimeters thinner than the iPhone 4. Now, I, I don't know. That doesn't really impress me much when I go like, oh, okay, good. It's 0.1 millimeters thinner. That's great. And um, apparently it transmits light a lot better than the than the regular panel that we have right now. So it's probably going to be a little bit brighter, too. And lastly, it has a smaller home button. I mean, <laughs> actually, that wasn't even the big the big deal. It does have a smaller home button, and and he saw that, you know, he measured the home button. I think it was like three millimeters in diameter or smaller. I don't, I don't know what the actual measurement was, but the iPhone 5's home button will be a little bit smaller. Big deal. But you know what? This is the biggest deal out of this guy's testing. The iPhone 5's uh, rumored front panel will be a whole lot more scratch resistant than the iPhone 4. And that is actually very significant because I'm looking at my iPhone 4 and it is just scratched up. Now, I, I use it bare. 
as in like no cases, no nothing. I just stick it in my pocket. I've dropped it 13 times so far. I'm, I'm keeping count. Yes, <laughs> I dropped it 13 times. No cracks, none of that. But it does have a, a scratch or two from a cat like walking over it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Next, iLounge says that the iPhone 5 might release with two cases. As in, the first case would be a bumper or something like the bumper. Maybe not exactly exactly the same bumper as the iPhone 4, but, you know, stretch out a little bit. It's probably going to be um, uh, more protective, I guess, like a, like a, a buffier bumper. I don't know. <laughs> and the second one, um, they didn't really have a lot of information on it, but they say that the second one will have a large impact on case manufacturers, as in, their, you know, their sales are going to go down. The case manufacturer sales are going to go down because iPhone's going to make this, I guess, super awesome uh, case. Probably not. It's probably not going to be that awesome. I mean, um, when they when they released, what is it? The iPad, iPad smart case, as in, you know, the, the, the case that you put the iPad in that has a smart cover attached to it. I wasn't very impressed. I was like, okay, that's the best you can do, Apple. I mean, this, there are so many more manufacturers out there that are doing a lot better than you. So, uh, you know what, case manufacturers, don't be worried um, when it comes to this. Unless you make crappier cases than Apple does. Uh, okay. Next, Gizmodo says that the iPhone 5 has been found, or at least there, there's photos of the iPhone 5 outside the factory floor. And... It's going to be, it's being used by case manufacturers right now to create these cases. And looking at this photo, a lot of the, a lot of the pundits out there are saying like, ah, oh, that's, that's totally fake. You know, it's totally not the real iPhone 5 because it looks like the iPhone 5, but they say it's probably not the real one. Um, my theory is that it's a prototype. So somebody went into the factory and they said, you know what? I have this prototype right here. I'm going to sell it to you. And these case manufacturers are like, all right, well, we'll, we'll, we'll all buy it. And then they grab the prototype and then they, you know, they make cases around that prototype. So, yeah, so I think it's a prototype. But pretty much with all this rumor, with all this smoke, there has to be a fire. That That's that's the takeaway here. And that is that the iPhone 5 is probably going to be four inches in diameter. The screen would be four inches in diameter. And... It, it's gonna have a smaller dock at the bottom. More on that, more, you know, more on the dock a little bit later. Also, speaking of iPhone parts, iLab.cc. Oh man, I'm gonna click on this website and it's totally not gonna work. Okay, it's all in Japanese letters, I think. They got a hold of the iPhone 5, not a complete iPhone 5, but you know, like 30, the iPhone 5 with 30% of its parts intact, something like that. And it's pretty much, the, pretty much the shell with a bunch of components inside it. And they they went through and they's like, oh, this is what the cable looks like, and this is what the you know what the cable for the camera looks like, the cable for the home button, and this is the home button and the volume button, and all this stuff. I mean, you know, we're we're totally obsessed with this stuff, or at least the Apple News websites out there, and including me, um, we're all just obsessed with seeing this this awesome iPhone. And one thing is, it really does ruin the fun of of an iPhone introduction. I mean. Whenever there's anything new that comes out of Apple and I didn't know about it, because there are times in the past when I'm like, you know what, I'm not going to read anything, anything from, the, you know, from the rumor, rumor news, none of that stuff. And then when Apple introduces like the new iPad or, or the MacBook Pro or whatever it is that they introduce, I'm like, oh, my God, this is great. You know, kind of, kind of like um, Oprah's audience, like, oh, my God, this is amazing. <laughs> I didn't actually do that, but uh, yeah, that's how I felt inside. Uh Next up, All Things D says, and somebody just walked in through the door. <laughs> all Things D, and actually, this, is, this isn't even my house. It's someone else's house. Hello. Oh, hi, Sarah. I'm recording a podcast. <laughs> I hope that's all right. <laughs> all Things D says that the Apple event will be at some point in time in September 9th. Uh, the week of September 9th. So that includes September 12th. And that Apple has spent at least $5 billion on parts lately, which leads them to suspect that since they're spending all this money on parts, they're probably creating the iPhone 5. <laughs> I mean, you got to spend it now in order to release it later. And actually, it amazes me that you can buy these parts now, spend like one or two months before the release, and then it's it's out, it's released. That's It's amazing. It's an amazing um, turnaround when it comes to raw products to a finished product. Two months, that's pretty good. Next, iLounge, actually, 
iLaunch has been very vocal this week. I mean, I, I haven't really heard from them from the past episodes. And then now all of a sudden they're just like, these are all the news. And I guess this is how they do their their uh, their advertising is because everybody picks them up and they go, oh, these guys are nuts. And they're, they're, they just make a lot of conversation. But they say that the iPad mini might launch at some point in time in November. Now this is um, different from all the other people that are saying, the, that are predicting the launch date for, for the iPad mini. They say it's November and I think that is a very, very long delay or not enough time for the holiday season. But it's still, you know, it's still before the holiday season. And one thing I don't get is why the delay? Because the iPad mini is probably not going to be using in-cell touch technology, so they're probably not going to be using the super advanced um, screens that the other components, the, the other um, the iPhones and the iPads that they're going to be using. So if this iPad mini is going to be using a pretty crappy, you know, screen, why the delay? Why is there such a delay on it? And yeah, it seems way too close to the end of the year. And this is what I suspect. This iPad mini announcement, it's, it's, they're probably going to announce it in, um, in the iPhone event, right? And they're going to go, oh, one more thing. And then they, they say it. I mean, that would, be, that would be nuts. But I don't think that's going to happen. Because when the iPad launched, I predicted a long, 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 long time ago. I predicted, oh, yeah, in this event, the iPad's going to launch. And then this is going to launch. And then they're going to they're gonna update the iPods. And they're going to update this and they update that. That's not what they did. When they launched the iPad, they just went... The iPad, like that's it. That's the only thing they talked about was the iPad. Maybe they'll do the same thing for an iPad mini event where that's the only thing they talk about is the iPad mini. Next, Apple and Apple Insider says that, you know, speaking of iPad mini, iPad mini's screens can come from WinTech. And I talked about WinTech a long, long time ago and Hi. <laughs> I feel awkward. I've lost my trail of thought now. <laughs> what? WinTech. Oh, yes. <laughs> WinTech. Um, apparently, their sales have increased by 61% month over month. And that's actually quite a lot. But remember, a few months ago or a few episodes ago, somebody or I think it was Brian White. Yes, it was Brian White. I should, I should update this. Brian White. Brian White said... The WinTech has decreased their projected earnings by, I don't know, like 31% or 40%, whatever, whatever percentage it was. They said, oh, yeah, we're going to decrease it. And then he goes, oh, this is probably because they didn't win the, the bid for making the iPhone 5 screen. And they didn't win the bid because they didn't have in, you know, the in-cell technology, in-cell screen technology. Well, these guys, Brian White is now um, suspecting that they WinTech won the bid for the iPad Mini, which doesn't use the in-cell technology. So that's something to keep in mind, and that their sales increased by 61% month over month. And that means Apple was just like, hey, we'll give you a bunch of money, you go make the screen. Now, here's one thing to keep in mind. Maybe their sales increased by 61% because on the previous month, it went down by, by a lot. So maybe they're just like, hey, you know what? We have this extra space for, you know, for, for manufacturing things. Let's, let's bid for Samsung and let's bid for HTC. Let's bid for all their stuff. And this might just be a normalization. I don't know if that's a word or not. Normalization of, uh, of their revenue. I have talked way too much about this. Let's move on to iLounge. And this is another one of their crazy, like, whoa, hold on, oh, stop the presses, let's talk about this. iLounge says that there will be an 8-pin dock connector on the iPhone and the iPad Mini. Probably the iPad Mini, but they never actually specifically said the iPad Mini, or I don't remember them saying the iPad Mini. And they say there's going to be an 8-pin dock connector. Now... That is actually pretty insane because we're going from 30 down to 8. I, re I remember I talked to you guys about the, you know, the whole 30 pin and, and why it makes sense to bring it down to 19 because um, all, the other, all the other pins that they got rid of supported Firewire. But now you're going to go from 30 pin down to 8. That means a lot of devices are, gonna, well, are not going to work anymore because each pin kind of, you know, I already talked about the pin thing. If you haven't heard the pin thing, probably download a few episodes, uh, maybe episode 9, 10, something like that. But they are saying 
that the 8-pin dock connector is going to be on either side of the iPhone. This means there will not be a wrong way of of connecting your iPhone to either a dock or a cable. You can just put the cable in at any direction you want onto this iPhone, and since there are 8 pins on both sides of the connector, there is no such thing as a wrong way of putting it in. Also, I think it was um, iMore, or 9to5Mac, one of them, that commented, they said, you know what? If it was going to be an 8 pin, that makes sense because the current connectors right now for the iPhone looks way too small to fit 19 pins in there. Unless they've really crunched down these 19 pins and they put them down in such a small space between each other, which causes, you know, user troubles and things like that. So they do say that it is possible that it could be an 8 pin just because of the, the, the size of the current uh, rumored iPhone. Man, it's so it's so weird to, to talk about these rumored, like, way far out there, like, nothing confirmed. Um, also, iLounge brought up that, that there have been rumors of a 16-pin or a 19-pin connector. I've never heard, after looking at all this stuff, I've never heard of anyone saying a 16-pin connector. I've always said, I've always heard everyone say 19-pin connector, new 19-pin connector. I've never heard 16-pin. And I have a feeling that they mentioned this 16-pin because 8 plus 8 equals 16 and there's going to be two connectors. But, yeah, keep that in mind. <sighs> oh, what else? I have, I have something here in my notes that says leaked docks took too small... Okay, whatever. <laughs> The Verge says that the iPad prototypes have had kickstands on them. That's right. The Verge has photos from the Samsung Apple kind of like two giants throwing boulders at each other and destroying each other pretty much. Um, Apple released photos of these iPads that had kickstand, like a kickstand ability on them. And looking at them, I'm like, oh man, this looks so weird. This is so not Apple-like to put a kickstand on their, on their, devi on their device. Also, the iPad looked like an iPod in that it had rounded sides, but a flush, um, up, you know, top and bottom. And it actually said iPod on the back of the prototype. So maybe they were thinking, hey, this should be the iPod line. <sighs> next. <laughs> I don't know why I like, I sigh. I'm like, Ugh, I have to go to the next story. <laughs> next, The Verge again with more photos, but this time of iPhone photos. And right now I'm looking at an iPhone with eight edges on them. Yeah, that's right. The the top left, the top right, bottom left, bottom right have all, all have a kind of like a like an edge to them. So it looks like a, it actually still looks like a square iPhone, but it does have a uh, eight edges. And you know what? I can see Apple making this. You know, it's not that far off. And let's see, like, uh, what are what other prototypes they have? Um, oh, they also had a prototype with a curved glass on it somewhere, and they Tim Cook did say that it was really expensive to, or not, not Tim Cook. Phil Schiller was like, "Hey, it's really expensive to make curved glass, so we're not gonna make curved glass." I'm starting to break down here, guys. I'm starting to break. Down. I'm not gonna lie to you. The heat is getting to me, and I'm sweating bullets right now. <laughs> and I'm gonna have a drink of water. Ah, uh, wow. Okay, The Verge, yet again, has more photos of the iPhone prototypes, and this time, it's a super, super duper slim iPhone that, ah, oh, come on, come on, thing, work. There you go. It's a super slim iPhone that is, that looks way too slim to me. I mean, I'm looking at this, and I'm like, oh, man, it looks like a, uh, to me, it looks like a, like a five inch screen diagonally with the same width as the iPhone. But maybe that's because I haven't really seen what the iPhone 5 looks like or, or held it or touched it. But this screen that they have here on prototype looks like, you know, <laughs> super elongated. It looks like you can stab someone with this phone. Uh, next, uh, wait, I, you know what, I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna sigh anymore. I'm gonna stop sighing. If I were to sigh next time, I'm just gonna go like, uh, I'm gonna sing. <laughs> That's what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna sing. Cult of Mac says that the iPhone 4 prototype, and this is again, is from that, from that major patent battle that they had. The iPhone 4 prototype was created four years before it launched. And that the iPhone 4 could have, or there was an iPhone that could have looked like an iPod, as in rounded edges. Oh, God, sorry. I burped again. <laughs> what is up with, like, podcasting and burping? I mean, I don't, I don't usually burp, but for some reason, I'm disgusting today. <laughs> so anyway, the iPhone could have looked like an iPod with rounded edges, 
and then a flush top and bottom. And I'm looking at it, it looks weird. It looks really weird to me. Next up, New York Times says that Apple, app, the Apple, the Apple is thinking of investing hundreds of millions of dollars on Twitter. And then I think the Wall Street Journal, I, yeah, I think it's Wall Street Journal. One of them, one of those other guys. They were like, uh, um, actually, this is this was a year ago. <laughs> And yes, it was a year ago. Apple and Twitter were just like, hey, you know, hey, let, let, let's talk about uh, let's talk about merging or not, not merging, but let's invest in your in your Twitter thing. And why would they why would they want to invest in Twitter and why would they want to you know have talks with Twitter? That's probably because they want to replace Ping, <laughs> that failed attempt of a social network in iTunes. They want to replace it with Twitter. So that's a possibility at some point in time in the future. Nine to five Mac says that authentic. I, uh, they reported, I don't know why they say they say that, they reported that Authentic is bought by Apple. and Or at least they're in the process of buying Apple. And Authentic, if you guys don't know about this, they are like a security company, you know, digital security company. And these are the possible implementations that you can have with Authentic. Secure networking. So that's good for enterprise. Fingerprint technology. So instead of having to swipe to unlock, just just touch the phone or hold on to a certain part of the phone and wallet slash app you know wallet app slash hardware so they can make a super super secure wallet app that communicates with servers securely and, and does transactions very securely or they can make hardware such as nfc or some other uh some other way that apple could could do purchases maybe nfc maybe bluetooth 4.0 i have i have heard of people saying bluetooth 4.0 instead of nfc you know make bluetooth 4. 4.0. So this is what Authentic could do. And here's some math for you guys. Apple bought them for like 300 million plus dollars. There are 250 employees. So that means roughly there is $1 million per employee. And I gotta say that is one rich janitor. <laughs> uh, and now for this. That didn't work. <laughs> uh, play. Oh, no. There we go. Hold <laughs> on. Oh, that was a fail. <laughs> Neowin.net says that the iPhone 5 prototype has been photographed. They have a photograph of the iPhone 5 prototype. And this guy's like, I think he was in Thailand or something like that. Like walking around and just taking photos of his iPhone 5. If you look at the picture, there's this screen on it. But this screen actually doesn't work. This, you know, it's non-existent. It, 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 has no, it, it doesn't work. Pretty much. That's that's the gist of this is this iPhone doesn't work, but it is a prototype. And again, this could be a prototype for case manufacturers or maybe this guy's like, he's in Thailand going, hey, case manufacturers in Thailand, do you guys want this iPhone 5? Next, Cult of Mac says that the iPhone 5 rumors caused, or actually, yes, they say that the iPhone 5 rumors caused smartphone trade-ins to spike. So there's a lot of people going on eBay trying to sell in their, to trying to sell their iPhones and their, their Blackberries and their other smartphone, Android phones, in, uh, you know, in reaction to the rumors out there. And this is, this is what I think you guys should do, or the listeners out here. If you do want an iPhone 5, you should either, one, uh, give it to a loved one. So in my case, I'm probably going to give my iPhone to my girlfriend or my mom, whichever one of them, or my brother. If he wants to buy it, I'm going to charge him money for this. <laughs> and and yeah, you can you can do that. Or number two, you can gazelle it. Yeah, I know. I listen to a lot of Twit podcasts, and he's like, oh yeah, you could you could, you could gazelle it. And I'm not. This isn't going to be like an advertisement for gazelle, but but yes, you could use gazelle. And I actually looked into using gazelle as an advertiser for this. And did you guys know that you get 10% uh, cut from purchases through Gazelle if they go through your specif specific link? That's pretty cool. That's, that's really good. Especially if someone's like, you know, a big hitter selling their iPad and the iPhone and their MacBook and then and you get 10%. That's a, that's a lot, right? But anyway, I'm not going gonna, I'm not, I'm not to do that with Gazelle. At least not yet. Maybe, maybe at some point in time in the future. And what I, okay, what I would do is I would either Gazelle it or go through Craigslist. Sell to somebody on Craigslist. And then, you know, <laughs> wait in front of your computer and hit F5. <laughs> hit refresh. Next up, again, from the, the highlights and, and, yeah, just things without meat in it. AllThingsD.com reports that there are new Apple products. Okay, 
I, I me I'm messing up with these transitions. I am just not on the ball right now. I don't know why. I'm just not on the ball. But new Apple products are thought of by 16 people. So there are 16 people in Apple that their job is to just think of something new that Apple could do. Something new in the future where they go, this is going to be a new product. And apparently they all do this around a kitchen table. <laughs> and they, in fact, they are so detailed with this stuff that they make 50 drawings of a button where they go, okay, this button doesn't look good. Okay, let's do another drawing. And then they go, ah, this button doesn't look good. And then let's do another drawing. So yeah, that's 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 a lot of attention to detail with these 16 people, and one of them is uh, Sir Johnny Ive. He's one of the 16, and now that I think about it, they probably don't meet in the kitchen table anymore. I have a feeling that they probably meet in the conference room where there's no cellular communication. There's no communication at all that can go in or out of that room or digital communication, and and you know super thick walls so nobody can listen in. And and they 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 all walk in. All sixteen of these people, they all walk in with their Pelican cases, locked Pelican cases with two different locks and a you know just super security, and they just unlock it and they open it and then they 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 start working on this stuff. Next, Reuters says that Sharp's president, or they reported that Sharp's president, Takashi Okuda, I don't know if I pronounced that right, let me know if I did, <laughs> Takashi, Takashi Okuda, say that uh, he did say that they shipped screens to Apple. That's, that's, that's all he said. And I think he said iPhone screens, but I wasn't sure. You know, I'm looking at all the reports and a lot of them are conflicting. They, they either said, I'm going to ship iPhone screens or I'm just going to ship screens, just general screens. And, and why did he do this? He did this because he wanted to make up for bad earnings because he made or Sharp made very little money in the previous months. So he goes, OK, you know what? I, I, I do say you know what a lot. You know what? I'm going to say, I'm going to tell the world, I'm making stuff for Apple. And since Apple is like, you know, the the the, the holy baby in the, I don't know where I'm going with this analogy, so I'm just going to stop. <laughs> uh, and then maybe he's expecting that his stocks would rise. Next, Wall Street Journal says that iTunes could use Twitter instead of Ping. And I already talked about this earlier. Apple Insider says that the iBook store could go to Latin America. I don't know how I could... Uh, how I could prove this or how, how I could check this. Maybe I could just Google iBooks Latin America. Next, Call of Mac says that Apple is waiting to launch iWallet or, you know, this, this, this thing, this wallet application or wallet hardware because the process is way too complicated right now. I think what you have to do now is you have to make sure that your screen is turned on and I think you have to unlock it and then you have to scan it. And then that's how you do your purchase right now with all these NFC enabled uh, phones out there. And Apple thinks that's way too complicated and nobody wants to do that. So maybe they're, maybe they're waiting to see, you know, hey, let's do this super awesome thing when it comes to iWallets. Next, fake 19 pin connector adopters. And this is from Tuwau. There's a guy out there saying, I found through this, through the Apple's website, through like a, you know, circuitous route through their, through their, um, Apple Store online. He's like, hey, I found a 19 pin to you know, a 30 pin to 19 pin connector that'll that'll convert your you know your 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 current your current 30 pin down to 19 pin. And to wow.com totally just gave this guy hell where they said this guy is a fake, he's a phony, because last year he made uh, a video showing the iPhone 5. And I looked at I looked at the photo of the iPhone 5 and I'm like, whoa, that's actually disgusting. I mean, why would Apple make such a crappy phone like that? Well, this guy, apparently he's a student and he's doing a paper or a report or a project. He's doing a project on how easy it is to fool people with internet rumors. And Tuwao just wouldn't have any of it. They completely ripped this guy apart. You should probably check it out if you guys want to see some poor kid get ripped apart by a website. <laughs> uh, next. Oh, geez, what website is this? Okay, Apple Pro. All I see here is translate.google.com slash translate slash whatever. Apple Pro dot, Apple dot Pro um, has images of iPad minis, but they are likely fakes because they do not look legit to me. And and what's up with this blurry photo? I mean, come on, man. You probably have an iPhone or something. Take a photo with an iPhone and, and, and focus well. <laughs> and it's all in the dark, right? Actually, I, that makes sense. Maybe it's... Uh, 
or I don't know, maybe an employee with a crappy phone on them, and then they just found this iPad, iPad, runs over to a dark closet, puts the iPad down, turns on the, you know, the 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 light the flash on their phone and just took snapshots of it yeah this this thing looks a little bit mm, sketchy but here's the thing to keep in mind these ipad rumors show 19 pin connectors on them and the speakers at the bottom just like not the iphone 5 and now for this hopefully you know i'm gonna press the button and hopefully it doesn't mess up like last time yes <laughs> Now on to patents and pie in the sky and just crazy weird stuff. And we will start things off with crazy weird stuff. According to iLounge, iOS 6 and Bluetooth 4.0 could let iDevices talk to each other. This is assuming that all the other iDevices have Bluetooth 4.0. And what they thought was, let's just say you have a, an iPod Nano on your wrist and you get a, an email or an iMessage. Because the iPod Nano and the iPhone are connected through Bluetooth, that iMessage information is going to travel right down to your iPod Nano and you can look at it because it's on your wrist and you can go, oh, okay, the, the, the gym wants another pineapple. I don't know, whatever, whatever it is, whatever it is the gym wants, you can look at it and yeah. Also, you can do maybe like a phone call through your Mac. So let's just say your, your iPhone starts ringing and then something shows up on your Mac to say, hey, your iPhone's ringing, answer on your, on your Mac and then it'll send all that information back to the iPhone. Yeah, something to keep in mind. That is pretty crazy, but uh, here's another thing that's super crazy. And this might fail because I haven't read the iPhone Universal Remote. Okay, actually, it isn't that crazy. Apple Insider reports that the iPhone could be used as a Universal Remote using NFC. And that's because there's a patent out there that, do, that does this. This is how it works. You have your iPhone and you walk up to a television or a, I think that's a PS two controller <laughs> i think i see a ps2 controller but um you can walk up the iphone that's nfc enabled walk up to any other electronic devices out there that is nfc disabled let's use the television as an example and what you do is you scan your iphone you touch the the nfc part of the television and now your iphone downloads specific information about your television and then uses your iPhone now turns into a universal remote, which is really, really cool. Except I think they can do better with Bluetooth 4.0 technology. That, that's what I'd be rooting for. But keep that in mind. They, Apple does have a patent on that right now. Next, 9to5Mac.com reported, reports this, rep, reported that there is a patent out there for a smarter smart cover. What I mean by this is... The smart cover will have an AMOLED display on it, front and back. Actually, not, not the back part, but just the front part is going to have an AMOLED display. And, you know, whenever you get something in your notification center, right, and maybe you get a notification in and your iPad is, is in your backpack, you can just take it out and you can look at the front of this smart cover because it is a screen. And you can just look right in front of it and now you can, you can see your notification and you can probably touch it and you can play around with it. And how would Apple get power to this? Well, it's probably going to do some sort of a wireless transfer of energy from the iPad to the smarter cover and then to do data transfer same thing wireless wireless technology data transfer and uh, oh oh actually and and when you flip it on the on its back you can use it as a keyboard or maybe a a touchpad on the back it doesn't have a screen but you can probably use it as a touchpad while looking at the actual ipad screen that is actually really cool but there's a few technologies that apple has to kind of overcome First is foldable technology, because if this cover was on your iPad, you know, you should be able to kind of fold it a little bit. It can't be rigid. It just, it just seems weird if it was some rigid piece of glass. No, no, it has to be something foldable. It has to be rollable. And actually, this sucks. Whenever, um, whenever, whenever somebody says, oh, yeah, you'll be able to roll your screen in the future, kind of like a magazine, right? But what happens when you roll a magazine, stick it in your backpack, and then, I don't know, you're on the car and, 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 you some, and somebody sits on your backpack? Well, the magazine kind of folds and breaks. <laughs> or not break, the magazines don't break. But if you did have an electron, a piece of electronic folded up and you sat on it, it'll break. Uh, that's a dumb idea. The phone is ringing. <laughs> uh, also, they need to improve their anti-scratch technology, whatever it is that they're going to do it here. Because if this thing was on the outside of your iPad, it will get scratched. So, I don't know, Corning, the, the, there's, a, there's a calling for you, Corning, and the, the makers of Gorilla Glass. 
Patently Apple says that, uh, oh, okay. The iPhone can determine an object based on RFID. So their example was, let's just say you're in a museum and there's a painting trying to ignore that phone call there's a faint there's, there's a painting right in front of you and you're like hey i want more information on this painting well you get your iphone with rfid and you you kind of like point it at the painting or something like that and and right when you point it it goes oh yeah this uh you know th this painting is made by by jean-claude van damme or whatever his, his name is <laughs> next up pa patently apple says that apple's google glasses or they're trying to copy Google Glasses. Oh, man, I'm falling apart in here. I don't know why. I made it. Th I made it through podcast number ten. You know the, the 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 great podcast, the great hurdle of a podcast. Apple's Google Glasses. Um, they, they have a patent on it. Ugh, I am breaking apart. Uh, you know, I'm gonna skip this story. I'm just gonna skip it. But pretty much, Retina display technology on Google Glasses. Oh, actually, this is probably the same story right here. <laughs> Apple Insider now says that there is uh, a patent. Apple has a patent on an actuating screen. That means the screen in front of your Google Glasses or Apple Glasses, whatever it is, the screen moves. The screen kind of not rotates, but it, it just moves, which means you have one pixel, one pixel, no, one pixel that moves in multiple locations to make it seem like you have more pixels than you really do. And this is to cut costs, production costs, because the less pixels, the better, you know, the, the cheaper. Also, it keeps down the battery, um, you yeah, know, just, just battery draw of, uh, of the product. It keeps it down because you only have so few pixels and the only thing you have to do is move the, the actual screen around. And there's a lot of things to overcome with this. Again, technology-wise, you probably need a silent motor, a motor that doesn't vibrate, and it needs to move in such a, a quick, you know, quick... Uh, I ran out of words. <laughs> I am falling apart. I can't believe this. Uh, I'm, I'm contemplating on re-recording this podcast, but I'm probably like 30 minutes into it right now, and uh, I have two more articles to talk about, so I'm sorry, guys. You're going to have to bear with me here. I am going to keep going. And actually, there is uh, a video out there of this guy with a, you know, a low resolution photo and he puts it on top of this vibrating table and all this table does is just vibrate all over the place, just like a crazy table. And <laughs> crazy table, that's that's what it should be called. And all it does is just vibrate all over the place and when you look at it, when you look at this low, low res photo vibrating, it looks like a super high res photo. So that's pretty cool. You kind of like trick your eyes into thinking that there's a high resolution thing there. All right, patently Apple says that there are 10 patents right now. Apple just all at one shot patented 10 things that have something to do with annotation and navigation of, of files, of PDFs and, and Word text files. And this means, or they, they assume that this means that, oh man, I'm gonna have an ad playing, I'm gonna have to hit pause, I'm gonna hit pause. I mean, I'm gonna hit, uh, <laughs> I'm gonna hit mute. Uh, that's gonna bite me in the butt again. But pretty much what they say is, what, what Patently Apple says is that this must be Apple's top priority because they have 10 patents right now. And one of the patents I can see looks like you can touch the back of an iPad and kind of control text that way, which is pretty cool. But now you have, you know, this thing in the back of the iPod, iPad that you have to control. Um, I'm actually for, you know, touch technology at the back of the iPad. Okay. Oh, next up, oh man, I'm almost falling apart. The very, very last one. And you know what, before I, I talk about this last one, I did talk about the 16 people that, that make up these, these new ideas, new products for Apple. Well, these 16 people thought about making an Apple car. That's okay, yeah, that's, that's far out. I mean, Apple, it's a te technology company. Cars, I guess you can, you can, know, you can do tech, tech in the car. Like Google is right now, they, they, they care about, they care about automatic driving because once once you start driving these automatic cars and you don't have to pay attention to the road, well, you're probably going to be on your smartphone or your laptop or whatever it is watching television, which Google puts ads in, right? So they can make more revenue that way. So yeah, so Apple did think about making a car, an iCar. And the joke out there is, yes, the iCar, it's going to have one pedal to go forward, one pedal, same pedal <laughs> to go backwards and the same pedal to stop. <laughs> Uh, one pedal to do it all. And actually, this comes, this news comes from Phil Schiller because he was in court 
for the I think the patent battle between Apple and Samsung Samsung and he said oh yeah we thought about a car and we also thought about a camera and I remember I think it was show number two or three where where I talk about the possibility of Apple making a camera oh I'm done <laughs> Woo, you know what I'm gonna play this because I'm done now and uh, oh see I muted it so I can't play this here we go there you go there you go <laughs> Wow, you know what? I think that this podcast was kind of a. Uh, I could have done better. I could have. Done, I could have done a lot better, especially with my transitions and stuff. I do know that I have to work more on my transitions. So, if if there's anything else out there that you guys think I should work on, let me know, and I really will try to work on it. And and I told myself I'm gonna work on my transitions this time, and that didn't really pan out. So, <laughs> whoops. <laughs> anyway. Check out the website. Check out, you know, YouTube if you want to see the video version of this. I don't know why you'd want to see my ugly mug on there. But, uh, hey, you know, you, you can make your own choices. And uh, that's it. All right. Thanks a lot, guys. You can email me at applebrute at gmail.com. You should visit applebrute.com if you want to look at the show notes. Thanks a lot, guys. See you next time.